first of all, I'm so pleased to see you in London uh, today for this movie. It's a great movie directed by Hinari to The Revenant. Uh, first of all, I would like to know it's a kind of project you're looking for a long time. You, you want to do a movie like this since a long time? I, I wouldn't say I, I've been wanting to do a film like this. I've been wanting to certainly go on journeys with directors like uh -huh. Alejandro. I don't even think that Alejandro knew why he wanted to do this movie. It was, in, in the beginning, this was a script that had been talked about and floating around, but nobody wanted to take it on because logistically it was so difficult to do, to be in these insane elements in nature, to immerse ourselves in the beauty of nature mm -hmm. like this. But uh, it was hard for a studio or a filmmaker to pull off, but there was a hunger that Alejandro had in, you know, wanting to immerse himself in an environment and see what the natural world gave him. And I think that I wanted to go on that experience with him. I wanted to, I wanted to have the narrative be changed mm -hmm. by what um, we saw out there. And it, and it did. The whole story and the whole structure and the poetry and the nuance and the sort of spiritual existential journey was all discovered on site and on location. That's not very strange. I mean, just after Burnman, because Burnman in so inside, you know, with the play, with the theater, making this one so outside with the landscape and something like that. I mean, whoa, it was, the, 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 yeah, something strange for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a completely, you know, 180 degrees yeah. change. <laughs> but uh, things that I did burn me in a way, I took some of the things that I learned from it and I, you know, I tried to apply in the narrative of, of, of The Revenant. Uh, even when it was absolutely different by the reasons you said, you know, we were facing very low temperatures, uh, high altitudes, weather changes, huge, massive choreographies, and mm -hmm. this horizon crepuscular infinite, you know, landscape of United States, and at the same time, very intimate emotional story. So all those things make this experience unique and challenging uh, as hell. Maybe the first character of the movie is the nature. I mean, you yeah. act and react with the location in Canada, mm -hmm. in Argentina, with the nature. Yeah, I, I think so. I think that we, you know, this whole film was very unique. We rehearsed for months beforehand. Mm -hmm. Every day was a rehearsal process because he wanted the beauty of the natural yeah. light, this one and a half hours that Chivo one of the greatest cinematographers Emmanuel ever. Emmanuel yes. yeah. um, Exactly. Yeah. Uh, wanted to shoot the entire film in. So every day was a mad scramble to accomplish everything we could in an hour and a half. So it allowed, it allowed you know, a lot of specificity for what we had to do, but at the same time, there was a lot of experimental filmmaking. If we had an extra half hour, we'd rush off and film an aurora borealis, or the beauty of you know, an entire landscape melting in front of us, or you know, coming and arriving on set and seeing that the whole world had been frozen over at night. Yeah. These are all the things that, you know, the beauty that you can't pre-plan in a CGI film. You have to bring a thousand people into the middle of the forest and live there yeah, yeah. in order to capture on and the irony is so much of the natural world has been manipulated it was difficult to find places that were untouched by man like that the nature is a character here yeah. it's the landscapes threaten him heal him kill him so i want to capture that epic feeling but at the same time always in real time unfragmented time to get the point of view of the character and put the audience in the shoes of this guy through a very close, tight shot of his face and see what. So all that language to go from these huge landscapes to go to these intimate emotional yeah, right. moments, that was the, the, the visual grammar that I wanted to explore and difficult, but it's worth it. You make some research to prepare your character. I mean, you read some book at this time of this yeah. period. Yeah, it was important for you. Or not really? No, no, there was a lot of research, but once we were there, I had to sort of forget everything. And yeah. I, the research was interesting because uh, although we didn't have much historical background to this time period, this was an era in American history where the, the East first started to infiltrate the West. Capitalism surged towards the West to extract the resources, you know, kill all the animals, cut the trees down, 
displaced the Native Americans, but not a, none of it was really documented. It was the Wild West. It was untouched landscape. There was no governing system there. It was French, English, you know, it was, it was Native Americans all in this melting pot of sort of survival. In, the, in this period, you have to understand that the melting pot was very complicated. There was all the Native Americans who owned that land. There were, Napoleon Bonaparte has just sold uh, 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 Louisiana and a huge part of the land of the United States. So there was a lot of French people, French yeah, Canadians. English people, French people, and a lot of French people. French Canadian, huh? in English. So it was uh, Mexicans. We have just independent, uh, make the independence from Spain one year before, mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. years before this. So it was a melting pot. And, and, and I think I, I was very interested to find the origins of this colonization story where the mixed race start in the United States. So a lot of the research was from journals of fur trappers. There was no writers there documenting history, stories of indigenous people. This was before any history was in this area in America, so we didn't know. It was like kind of recreating science fiction from little journal bits. And, and, and of course, you know, working with survivalists to understand how these men endured these harsh landscapes was some of the main stuff that I wanted to take out. The movie is absolutely amazing, and the sequence of the grizzly, it's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, how you, you played this sequence? I mean, like a choreography, it was very precise uh, with the grizzly, and uh, it's brutal also. The, the grizzly experience, some of the opening shots, certain sequences were literally weeks of rehearsal. Alejandro doesn't want me to talk about how it was done because he doesn't want me to ruin the magic of okay. it. <laughs> but it had to do with, you know, uh, <laughs> cables and <laughs> And, and things that you would never imagine. So seems to be so real. This sequence is amazing. It, it was that intense planning that I think created that that reality. You know, it was it was it was a lot of thought put into each one of these sequences. You know, for the director like you, it was also a unique experience. Yes, yeah. I, I consider <laughs> myself an eternal art student. You know, I think film allow in a way to explore infinite possibilities of expression and convey. Mm -hmm ideas or emotions and, and you know, every time, if, if it really fits, uh, fits uh, the, the dramatic tension that is needed or the story make it better or more powerful, if I can use that uh, uh, elements to, to try and I like the possibility of failing, you know, even if, if, if we cannot fail, then that's boring. It's part of the process, you know. How you work with Alejandro on this one, with Hinari too? Very well, to be honest. I think that He's a, he's a very <clears throat> demanding and specific director, and anyone who's, you know, um, relentless in achieving their vision, I love. Uh -huh. I mean, that you'd do anything for that director, and I think that all the actors felt that way. Like we were making a very unique piece of art. We were we were being challenged to do something very different than than anything we've ever experienced artistically. So, you know, there was almost nothing we wouldn't do for him mm -hmm. because. You want to be a part of that communal experience, and it was exciting for everybody. Uh, this film was very physical, uh, very extreme for the actors to put themselves in those conditions, performing with a very uh, high standard mm -hmm. and meticulously choreographed. Nothing was improvised, so it was a pre-designed thing a tango dance between the camera and Chivo and Leo and all what we plan, but at the same time to be truth and uh, and in very, very uncomfortable exterior locations. And it, it requires a brave, courage soul uh -huh. uh, beyond the incredible craft that Leo has. You, know. you work a lot with uh, Alejandro, also with Shivo, because I like so much the sequence where you can see your breeze. Yeah. You can see a lot of things like this. So you work with the director of photography, maybe much as usual, because it's so important on this one. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I, I, I call it, you know, like operating a Swiss watch every day because every single department had to work in exact coordination with Chivo yeah. and that camera. It was just one man 
that camera and the elements. But what they what they do cinematically here, I think something is very unique. They have the ability to bring a you know a David Lean type of You're grand right. epic landscape and mix it with incredible intimacy of the breath and feeling the heartbeat of a character then whip around to something that looks like a a, a Tarkovsky shot or mm -hmm. or you know uh, you know uh, some sort of beautiful European film that you that that is all you know immersed together in this virtual reality mm -hmm. type of experience and Chivo's able to do that so we had to work with Chivo very specifically you know a hundred extras had to work in exact unison yeah, with yeah, the close-up of the eye as it whipped around it's 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 uh, it's a grand cinematic achievement, in my opinion, what they pulled off here. And it was, and it's been something that Alejandro has been developing for a long time in his mind. And I think he's really coming to fruition right now as one of the master filmmakers of our time. I always envisioned this film more like, um, as as Birdman has much to do with uh, jazz. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think this film has to do much more with painting and dreams. You know, I want this to be a sonic painting, uh -huh. as if you can go inside the painting, I imagine always Caravaggio, and suddenly get into the history and the seats of the colonization of the United States and be a ghost and the spirit of time floating. That, that, that's how I want people to, to, to sensorially uh, get this film, you know? Very sensorial, very subconscious. Uh -huh. um, not realistic, but in a much more I think the way we perceive or have the memory of reality, you know, the great survival movie. It's also the yeah, the, the great adventure movie, and of course, it's a great movie regarding the nature. Do you think there is connection right now with this subject? It's a 19th century, of course, but do you think there is certain resonance or echo with right now? Absolutely, we did a film to submerge ourselves in nature and see what nature told us, and what nature told us was. It's changing. Yeah. You know, we had to shut down production two times uh, because of the fact that the entire landscape had unprecedented weather patterns that had never occurred in, in this province in Canada. And that's happening all over the world, and it's terrifying. 2015 being the hottest year in recorded history, every month breaking records. We experienced it firsthand on this movie. We, we had to shut down because there was once where there was always snow for recorded history, we were sitting there with no snow for weeks and weeks and weeks, and it was scary. The world community needs to wake up because it's absolutely eerie that 2015 has been this way. It's all happening right now. He's afraid. He knows how far I came to find him. So you won three Oscars last year with Burnman as a director, as a best movie. You have 12 nominations this year. What does it mean for you? I mean, uh, having. 12 nomination for this movie? I am um, very proud that most of the head departments, uh, the crew got uh, nominated. Uh -huh. uh, it is basically a, 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 an appreciation from the Academy members and some colleagues that in a way has been close to the process of making a film that appreciate what we did, you know? And, uh, and that feels good because in a way we took a lot of chances it will help the film to be a, uh, to create some awareness around the world mm -hmm. and more people can see it. That's basically finally what really these awards are about. Um, and, um, and it's a justification for us to get a drink together and, <laughs> and be well dressed and not smelling with beers. And, <laughs> so it will be funny to see us clean, having a drink and you know, celebrating that night. That would be great. But last year you have the time, I mean, to be happy with your th three, your two uh, Oscars. I mean, two as a director, not best, because you, you made the run at the same time, if I remember, no? during just after the, the Oscar ceremonies last year, no? Yeah, no, I was, I was, um, I was shooting. Yeah, yeah, I was shooting. What while all this was happening, I started shooting this film September last year. Uh, no, two years ago. Two years ago, yeah. But it was basically in this in the award season, so I was going to. I, I remember in the Oscars night receiving a lot of bad news from the production, so it was a, a tension, very, tension. A, a <laughs> very, strange feeling. <laughs> very strange feeling of contradiction to be awarded and at the same time, you know, suffering a lot of. Uh, problems in production so but it was great it was great because it kept my mind not in the craziness of the award seasons and ego and things like that but I keep my mind 
much more work in what I was doing, which was very healthy. <laughs> Do you have a new project right now? Sleep. <laughs> okay. six, six months like a bear. That's, that's what I need. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alejandro. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very Thank much. You.